This is episode 155 of the Focused Mindset Podcast. And today I'm going to answer a question from a listener that came in and it inspired an entire conversation about how we can deal with conflict in our life. And at the end, I'm going to share with you seven solution-focused journal questions that you can use in your personal journaling time this week. Remember, you can get all 35 of my solution-focused journaling questions by jumping over to my website, thefocusedmindset.com, and you'll see that free giveaway still going on right now. So let's get into this episode. Welcome to the Focused Mindset Podcast. This is the one and only podcast where you can figure out how to sort out your life using the solution-focused approach. You may have heard about it in counseling, but guess what? You can have a mindset that's full of solutions rather than filled up with all of the problems that try and overwhelm us. I'm Cher Kretz. I am a solution-focused life coach and I'm a school counselor. Here, we discuss how you can be the best version of yourself in your home and with the people you love. Jump over to my website, thefocusedmindset.com to learn more about our products and services. Hello, I'm so glad you're here in this episode. I want to address a question that came in from Victoria. I mentioned to you last week that I was going to talk about that because Victoria is a listener who sent me an email and she asked me about one little part of episode 153. You may remember in 153, I was speaking about one person that made a huge impact in my life and also sharing my story of my fitness journey. And I spoke a little bit about a period of time when my husband and I were finding ourselves in conflict. And I said, it's funny how when you just focus on what you need to do and what you feel called to do, then everything works out, something along the lines of that. And Victoria said, could you clarify what you meant by that? And in thinking about it, I can tell how that can go in many different directions. The only person that we have control of is ourselves. You know that, I know that, and even in raising kids, as much as we wish that we had some kind of magic wand that can help them line up with all of what we need them to do, we know it's simply not true. Each of us were born as individuals, and we have our own ups and downs and moods and problems. And many times, though, when we get in a conflict with someone that we love, immediately our mind shifts from any self-reflection and we're thinking about how we were wronged and what went wrong in the other person and what they should have done differently. And that line of thinking brings us to sometimes uh, either anger or feeling sorry for ourselves and sometimes feeling like, why me? Why do I have to deal with this? It's, it becomes a whole negative whirlwind of thoughts that can lead straight to depression, honestly, especially if the person that we're in relationship is with is dealing with something that's challenging. We can't jump inside of their body and change it for them. It's so empowering to be able to believe in them and support them and, and all of those things. But sometimes there comes a time where we need to be real. And I was at that moment. And the real truth was that I needed to take a moment to think about what I needed to focus on in my life. I had to have 100% faith that the situation that we were going through that was stressful was something that was going to uh, that was going to work out in time, but I knew that I didn't necessarily have control over that. I didn't have control over it at all, and that realization led me to saying, "I can't change everything, but I can change what I'm doing." And are there some things about my life to help me feel more empowered, to make me feel uh, more healthy at that time, more 
whole, more complete um, working out was the avenue that I chose. It was something that was a brand new passion of mine. So it ignited a whole new part of me that I could discover and explore. And that in that moment was healthy. Sometimes we do have to consider when we're in a conflict, no matter what it is, or even in a parenting struggle, we have to step back sometimes because when we're so involved and we're so close to the problem, sometimes we're focusing on all of the wrong things and we're basically letting ourselves get worked up rather than stepping back, breathing and having patience. Patience is a big part of leading a happy, healthy, successful life. And patience is a big part of being a counselor and a life coach because when you're dealing with human beings, you are not you're not on your time frame. They are the ones that have to walk in their life and and it takes time to unravel sometimes the things that are going on inside their head and to have aha moments of their own. I knew that I needed to bring all of those skills into my own life. I needed to be the one that had patience. I needed to have patience with the people that were closest to us. Isn't it interesting how we can have patience for people we don't know? Sometimes so much easier than the people that are closest to us. We expect and demand a certain level of respect or actions or expectations and it allows anxiety to come into the relationship and pressure on the other person. Is that really the dynamics that we want in our relationships? Is it the relation is it the dynamics that we want in any situation where we're involved? Do we say, I'm gonna walk into this situation and I hope that because of the high expectations that I have for things that I put anxiety on them and that they will feel that. No, we want to come in and have them feel comfortable and loved by us, supported by us. Those are the things we desire, but our actions don't always add up. In the time that I spoke about in that podcast, it was a very tangible example of how when I stepped away and started working on what I needed to work on with working out, that exactly one thing that was my desire, that my husband and I could be on the same page as I had always desired and we had seemed to be um, off for quite some time, that he circled back and then aligned very closely to the same place that I was. In that example, I could see how letting go actually gave me what I needed. I wonder if there is a circumstance in your life where you need to loosen your grip. You need to not completely let something go and fly away forever, but just relax in the situation and loosen your grip a little. I sometimes call this holding on loosely. Um, There's an old song in the 70s, um, hold on loosely, but don't let go that always just uh, seems to be on point for so many situations in our life when we try to take both of our hands and hold on tight and something makes us want to just control it. And that is going to strangle, smother, and ultimately kill any hope of a healthy relationship. So we need to open our hands. Opening opening our hands, that, that gesture of our hands being open, kind of like a hug, but straight uh, with our palms facing towards the sky. This is an open stance that sometimes... Uh, counselors have said is healthy for people to do in order to open their mind, open their client's mind to a new way of thinking. Um, It's completely different than folding your arms in front of you as more of a stubborn stance. Picture yourself in your situation uh, that you struggle with, that maybe you struggle with trying to control. Picture yourself opening your hands and having faith 
and hope and belief that it will work out and that you don't know how it's going to work out. And that might cause a little bit of anxiety, but holding on tight is not going to solve that problem. That's a trick that our mind tells us. Our mind says, wait a minute now, you're out of control, hold on tightly. And I've learned that holding on loosely and sometimes completely opening your hands and letting go helps you have peace. And what are you letting go of? You're letting go of the uncertainty around that situation. You're letting go of your expectations in that moment. You're letting go of your fear of how it might turn out, which is sometimes the very reason that we're clinging too tightly in the first place. Fear-based actions lead to an anxious frame of mind. And opening your hands and opening them up like a big hug on both sides, you could even just stand in front of your mirror and say, I am going to be open to what I need to do to control my next steps forward. Write down a mind map and say, what is it that I love doing that maybe I'm ignoring right now? What energy do I need to put towards something else besides this conflict? I need to take all this energy and this bent up frustration and this sadness and disappointment, and I need a new place to put my energy. What am I ignoring? Because we only have so much energy to give each day, and we're going to be completely depleted when we let our minds spin out of control. So what is it? Do you love gardening and you've let it go? Do you love, um, like a friend of mine said recently, being in community and you've neglected that? Do you love um, knitting? I don't know. It could be anything that you know deep in your heart is a passion that you have not been doing. And you have all the reasons to. Well, I've been too upset. Maybe I've been in conflict too much. Well, what happens if you let go of the conflict and you picked up something that helped you. My daughter talks about how um, when she's angry, she takes her anger out on the volleyball court. Well, I say, well, you know, if you, if you're doing that in the right way and in the uh, correct form, then basically you're redirecting your energy, right? And your energy is now put towards a passion of yours. And pretty soon, That conflict is not something that is so worrisome anymore. And sometimes we even see things clear because of it. We say, wait a minute, I see a resolution to this conflict that I never saw before. I see something I can do. I see something that I can change. And when we're not so worked up on what's gone on with the other person, then Sometimes we see the flaws in ourselves that we need to change. It's hard to look at ourselves sometimes and and take a microscope and say, where is the problem in me? That's so hard to do, but it's so important. And this very action can help us do that because we're more in line with focusing on the things that we need to do. So we're thinking about that open stance of, opening yourself up rather than closing yourself or holding on tight. And sometimes it makes me think of having faith, having faith in God. We've heard of the statement, let go and let God. Well, if you're a person of faith, you know how much truth there is in that. You know that faith has a lot to do with believing in the things that seem still quite foggy and you're not really sure what's on the other side, but you choose faith. It's, it's important. And so that kind of clarifies a little bit about what I meant when I said, it's amazing how we can focus on what we need to do and then sometimes things all work out. Focus on what you need to do. It is so empowering to say, I can control my next step. I can control whether it be the things that I read, the things that I listen to, the people I hang around, 
the whether I move my body or whether I relax, why do we feel sometimes like there are strings holding us and that we are bound to do something based on uh, a habit that we have or, or a feeling that we have or something that was done to us? Free yourself of that. Choose to take action on something that is important to you, not by holding on tightly to all the people around you and all of the things around you, but actually by opening your hands and saying, I'm open. I'm open to my next steps. I'm open to what might be in my future. I'm open to the hard work that might be in front of me, to the effort that I need to put in, even to the struggle. I'm open. And then see what comes alongside. It might not happen tomorrow, next month, or even next year, but something will come back to you and you'll be like, wow, this is something I desired. And now here it is in front of me, not because I chased it or held on to it tightly, but because of the time when I spent doing my own thing, that other person, if it's a relationship, had the freedom to truly work on the things that they need to work on in order to line up better with the person that you are. In my situation, that was, uh, was important. I find that it's important in many situations that I'm in. Um, when I'm working with people in a professional way, many times I have to remind myself just to hold back from sharing my opinion even and uh, being the person who uh, quickly has something to say. It's patience. It's always acting in patience and saying, okay, is this the right timing? Is this what needs to be said? Um, not shrinking back. I'm not saying ignore uh, your your boldness. You know, I believe in us being bold. But I'm saying, have enough patience to know when it's time to listen and know when it's time to stand up and say, it's, I'm going to share. And whatever situation this helps for you, I hope you can apply it. Feel free to talk to me about it. I love to hear about it. This short episode was for my listener, but also hopefully it spoke to you. And now I'm going to read you seven solution-focused journaling prompts. As you know, I'm giving away my 35 top solution-focused journaling prompts, which actually are the same as some of my favorite solution-focused questions. It's important that we train our mind. And at the beginning, I used to have a cheat sheet. I used to carry around questions with me. So I would be able to remember to not think about me and the next thing I'm going to say, but think about what I might ask others. And when I talked to myself, I wanted to train myself to think more solution focused. I hope this does the same for you. I'm going to say seven questions. If you take a week to do each question in your journal in order, they'll build on one another. And you're going to find that it trains your mind to be able to look at things clearly and with love and respect as well. So let's start. Number one, what does living with intention mean to me? Number two, what if I looked at myself in the same way my pet looks at me. Number three, when an unhelpful thought happens, what will I think instead? Number four, what happened that made me feel in touch with the real me today? Number five, What do I notice that is slightly better than yesterday? Number six, what would I rather be doing instead? And number seven, what did I do differently that made sure this week didn't get worse? Let me know which one is your favorite 
and spend some time writing. Free writing means you just open your mind without judgment and just let it come out. (laughs) Next week, I'll say another set of seven. And if you want to hear the one that I did last week, just jump on over. It's at the end of the episode of 154. And you can have these as a free download just by checking the show notes. I'm going to put it right at the very top or by hopping over to my website, thefocusedmindset.com. Before you go, don't forget to check the show notes where I'm going to leave the links to my social media and the different places you can find me. And I want to invite you to be a part of my email community. It's absolutely free. And this year I'm doing so much writing and so much reflecting, and I want to send things directly to you. I send the special notes to my email community and you can email me right back. You have a direct line to ask me questions without any barriers of a website or anything. Check the show notes for that link or go to thefocusedmindset.com. And if you click on getting the journal prompts, you also automatically are able to be a part of my community. And if you're interested in supporting this program, there's three ways to do it. One, make sure you're following this program so it comes up as one of your favorites. Two, share it either on your social media or with someone you love straight to their email. And the third is to leave a review. And I love reading those. By supporting this program, we're helping people be solution-focused. See you next week.